The Compad M2000 was a line of notebooks produced by Compad from 2000 to 2005. Windows 2000 was also an operating system released in 2000 by Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to see how well Windows 2000 will run on this notebook, and also try to see if you can use Windows 2000 in the year 2017 as your main operating system. The laptop came with an HP charger, but because HP owns Compad, I wasn't really worrying that much. I plugged it in and it worked just fine. I started it up and Windows 2000 was already installed. However, there was not really anything I could do because none of the drivers were installed. Windows 2000 did not detect anything of the hardware out of the box. I went onto the internet and downloaded the drivers for the video, audio, and some other stuff. I downloaded it onto a USB drive. Now, it was time to install all the drivers I have downloaded. Yes, Windows 2000 does have support for USB out of the box. I changed the desktop wallpaper connected to the internet and opened up Internet Explorer 5 and played with it for a while, but now I had to update the operating system. Updating the OS was a pain, and it took about 3 hours. If you want to do this for yourself on your Windows 2000 computer, I will leave the how-to video on how to update Windows 2000 in the description. First, I had to install Internet Explorer 6 and Outlook Express 6, released in 2001. Next, I had to install Service Pack 4, released in 2005. Next, I had to install Update Rollup 1 for Windows 2000 Service Pack 4. Next, I installed the Windows Update Agent version 3.0. Then, I opened up Windows Update. I needed to change some settings to get Windows Update to work, and it also wanted to install some updates for Windows Update. Next, I had to download and install 100 updates. This took a very long time, and some of the updates were driver updates. This took a very, 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 very long time, so I sped the video up by about 100 times faster to make it easier to watch. Windows Update also installed programs like Windows Media Player 9, released in 2001, and DirectX 9. This took about a few hours, and it was probably the most agonizing part of updating the operating system. It was a real pain. I passed time by watching YouTube, eating lunch, and doing other things. I had to restart the computer at least three times while it updated. Support for Windows 2000 ended in 2010, so I was basically installing five to ten years worth of updates. That's a lot of updates. Also, it's kind of surprising at first that Microsoft still has the old Windows 2000 slash XP update site after all these years. But because lots of people still use XP in 2017, it's really no surprise once you think about that for a while. XP support ended in 2014, by the way. Finally, we are done with Windows Update. Now, I had to install a custom hotfix for Internet Explorer 6. Next, I had to install an extended kernel. This basically adds some extra functions to the inner workings of Windows 2000 and all that behind the scenes stuff. It helps us to run modern programs also. So now, we're done updating. That took a lot of time. Now, the actual Is Windows 2000 Usable in 2017 video is going to begin now. I'm going to see how well Windows 2000 performs seven categories of everyday tasks. Those tasks are productivity, gaming, media, like DVDs, MP4s, MP3s, etc., internet browsing, email, security, like antivirus programs, and normal programs, like modern programs that you use on your computer every day. Each category will get a check mark if you can do this in 2017 on Windows 2000, or a question mark if I'm not 100% sure, or an X if you can't do this on Windows 2000 in 2017. Let's get started! Enjoy the video! The first category is productivity, like making documents and spreadsheets. The version of Microsoft Office that was made for Windows 2000 was Office 2000, released in 1999. It took about 10 minutes to install, and it's not a surprise considering that, well, it was made for Windows 2000. Now, it's time to test out Office 2000. I created a test 
test Word document, play with the sizes of the font, and save the file and reopen it. It runs fine, but I mean, it's about 18 years old by now, so I think we should upgrade Office. And yes, we can. The latest version of Microsoft Office for Windows 2000 is Office 2003, released in 2003. Office 2003 was made for Windows XP, but it also can be installed on Windows 2000 with no problems. It took about 12 minutes to install. A little longer than Office 2000, but hey, I mean, I can wait two minutes. Time to test Office 2003. I did the same thing I did with Office 2000. Open a Word document, save it, and reopen it. 2003 has a very nicer UI than Office 2000 does. Office 2003 is over 14 years old, so it's only four years newer than Office 2000. Not that newer. I think modern Office can open Office 2003 documents, but I'm not 100% sure because I don't actually own Office 2016 or 365. How about a different Office suite? Open Office is a popular alternative for Microsoft Office. I was extremely surprised when the latest installer for Open Office opened without any problems. It even installed without any issues. How does Open Office run, you may ask? Very nice. This is a modern edition of Open Office and it runs just fine. I'm gonna give productivity a pass because I can make documents and save them just fine with a modern application on Windows 2000. Next up is gaming. I'm not really into games, so I can't really give a pass or a fail here, but I do have two games that were made from Windows 2000 and the 9X series, Roller Coaster Tycoon, released in 1999. I put in the disc, but I got an error. I even tried restarting, but the error did not go away. Oh well, guess I'll have to try my other game. I tried my other game, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, released in 2002. The installer opened, and for a second it looked like it was actually going to install, but nope, I got an error. I have no idea what is happening here, if it's a disk problem, if it's a problem with the laptop, or a problem with the OS itself, or even the CD drive. I have no idea, so I'm just gonna leave a question mark for gaming. It's all up to you. Now, it's time for me. I was able to open up a JPEG and a PNG file of Internet Explorer 6 without any problems or hassles. The latest version of Windows Media Player that supports Windows 2000 and Media Player 9, released in 2001. I was able to play an MP3 and a MIDI file with no problems, but due to an audio problem with the camera and Premiere Pro 2018, I can't show you the actual audio of the laptop playing the music, but trust me, it works. But however, I couldn't play an MP4 on Windows Media Player 9. I found out that there was actually a way to install Windows Media Player 10 on Windows 2000, and to my surprise, it actually worked. Windows Media Player 10 was released in 2004, according to Wikipedia. It still couldn't play MP4 files, but at least it's newer than Media Player 9, and it had no problem playing those MP3 files and MIDI files. I also tried to see if I could go to Media Player 11, but I had no luck there. Windows Media Player 11 was also released in 2006. Try a third-party media player. The latest edition of VLC Media Player requires Windows XP Service Pack 2, but with the application compatibility launcher, something that I installed on Windows 2000, I was able to install it on Windows 2000 without any problems whatsoever. Videos work just fine on VLC Media Player, but like I said, I can't really display the audio due to a camera problem, but you can see the MP4 videos running just fine without any problems. VLC can also play YouTube videos with an internet connection. Very useful in my option, and I also believe you can download YouTube videos using VLC. You can't search for videos, like them, dislike them, or comment on them though, but I'll try to explain more about this later. Next up is internet browsing. 
browses the internet daily. So Windows 2000 needs to be able to connect to the internet and browse the internet if you want it to be usable in 2017. The latest version of Internet Explorer for Windows 2000 is Internet Explorer 6, released in August of 2001. If we look at Wikipedia, managed flashing the Luna on IE6, which is kind of surprising. But other sites, well, loaded horribly or even didn't load at all and crashed the browser. Well, they didn't really crash the browser because they, you know, didn't load at all. That's kind of what you would expect from a browser that's over 16 years old by now. It's horrible. I also tried to do the acid tests on IE6. Some of them did work, but the other ones did not. I'm the tribe Mozilla Firefox. Firefox is a very popular browser. The latest version of Firefox is a lot of errors, however, on Windows 2000. Firefox 50, however, did actually work and installed just fine without any issues with the application compatibility. How does YouTube work? Well, first, I had to install Flash Player. The latest version of Flash Player installed just fine. The YouTube website is a little bit slow in my option, but it's not terrible or horrible. I was able to find a video and search for videos and all that stuff. Time to test the video playback. At first, the video kind of lagged, but it got better as time went on. The video played just fine in my option, and the audio didn't lag at all. YouTube does work on this laptop on Windows 2000 in the year 2017. Like I said, VLC can play YouTube videos, and the video played with hardly no lag on VLC. I suggest using Firefox to search for videos in VLC to play them. It just plays better than Firefox does in my option. Opera 12.18 is another browser for Windows 2000. I installed it and tried it out. YouTube videos on Opera lagged a lot and were on Washington, but other sites worked fine like Google. I'm going to give internet browsing a pass here because I was able to browse the internet and watch YouTube videos other stuff on Windows 2000 in 2017. Time for email. Mozilla Thunderbird 45 managed to install on Windows 2000 without any problems. Thunderbird is a good email client and it works with Gmail and other email services. Thunderbird worked with my Gmail and I was able to send and receive messages on my account. Thunderbird is made by the same people who made Firefox, just so you know. If you don't use Gmail, your email account will need to be able to work with SMTP and IMAP to use Thunderbird with your email account. If we go back to Microsoft Office 2003, there is an email client that comes with Office 2003, that is, Outlook 2003. I highly suggest that you don't use this, because it was released in 2003 and it's 14 years old, and it probably has a lot of security issues and problems. It still worked, and I was able to access my Gmail with Outlook 2003 in 2017, but still, don't use Outlook 2003 for email, it's very insecure, and I would recommend using Thunderbird. I'm going to give email a pass here because it works fine in the year 2017 on Windows 2000. Now it's time for security. I don't really care about security, I doubt that most modern malware works on Windows 2000, but still. Malwarebytes, AVG, and the latest Avast did not work, but Avast 8 did actually manage to install. I guess I'll give a pass on antivirus and security. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure Avast 8 will work fine. Now it's time for programs. I have a few programs to discuss. Webclip, Sandlinger, Audacity, and Gatrail. Webclip installed with no problems and worked with zip files. However, the Audacity installer was corrupted, so I had to re-download it. After I re-downloaded it Audacity and installed it, it worked. I was really surprised. It can play back audio and generate audio. Because the laptop doesn't have a microphone built in, I didn't test recording audio. Cclear installed with the application compatibility launcher. I had to do some extra steps since Cleaner would think it was running on Windows XP. It worked. I even ran the cleaner, and it cleaned 254 megabytes of data. I'm gonna give programs a pass because they work fine on Windows 2000 and 2017. So there you have it. Windows 2000, a 17-year-old operating system, is perfectly usable in 2017. 
I worked really hard on this video, so leave a like or subscribe if you like this video and would like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.